Hello friends, welcome back to our video lecture series on course title fluid mechanics 2. In this lecture, we will continue with our previous topic centrifugal pumps and we will be discussing work done by centrifugal pump uh, that is uh, impeller of pump on the fluid. So this is what we have discussed previously, assumptions uh, made in the theory of or in the derivation of work done by the impeller on the water and we have also discussed working on the centrifugal pump and this was the concept of angular momentum what we have discussed previously if you want to go through those uh, those basics again then you can pause this video and read those points uh, whatever available on the slide so this is what uh, uh, velocity triangles at the inlet and at the outlet what we have discussed previously now let's move for the computation of work done by an impeller on the water so whenever we talk about the work done per second of course we are taking the force uh, multiplied by velocity so in this case, it is slightly different, something uh, related to the Francis turbine. So work done by the Francis turbine would be something like similar to the uh, centrifugal pump. Just the difference that in this case, our impeller is doing the work on the uh, water. Previously, our water was doing work on the impeller because my water was striking on the impeller veins, uh, uh, on the uh, curved veins and it was exerting a force, certain amount of force on the veins. But in this case, my curved veins are exerting force on the water. Now, uh, as we have discussed previously, uh, radius of the curved vein at the inlet and at the, at the outlet are they, uh, different and therefore whatever my u1 and u2 both will be different in this case. And as I told you that u1 is the tangential velocity at the inlet and u2 is the tangential velocity at the outlet. Now both can be easily calculated by using equation omega multiplied by r1 and omega multiplied by r2 will be equal to u2 where omega is the angular speed and r1 and r2 is the radius of the, the sampler at the inlet and at the outlet so this omega is the angular speed and we are multi going to multiply it with the r1 now as we have also discussed uh, whenever now this impeller going to exert certain amount of force on the liquid it will be exerted in the rotational direction that's why it will be exerted in the form of torque and the torque is given by force multiplied by radius now uh, this uh, Expression, if you see here, this force can be easily calculated by considering impulse momentum principle. So, this force would be given by momentum per second, that is change in momentum per second. Force given by change in momentum per second. I will write down that change in momentum per second multiplied by radius r now if you look at this expression carefully what we have discussed in the last lecture that is concept of angular momentum so this is the uh, linear momentum multiplied by radius so what we can say that it is the moment of momentum and which is called as angular momentum so when we are calculating this torque we need to consider angular momentum and then we can calculate that work done per second so while calculating this torque which is exerted by the impeller on the liquid that is in the form of angular momentum so we need to consider this torque is equal to rate of change of angular momentum previously we were considering it only as a momentum linear momentum but in this case we need to consider angular momentum because as it is torque and torque is given by force multiplied by radius and if you put the expression for the force that is given by rate of change of momentum per second and multiplied by radius so it will become moment of momentum and that moment of momentum is called angular momentum so our uh, now using uh, impulse momentum principle our torque is given by rate of change of angular momentum now this rate of change of angular momentum is given by momentum mass into velocity multiplied by r now we are going to calculate that rate of change of momentum one by one the first uh, we will uh, go through what we have discussed previously and what we have assumed that water is going to enter radially at the inlet for the best efficiency of the pump and in that case my v1 will be equal to vf1 alpha will be equal to 90 degree and my v1 will be equal to 0 again our n is the speed of the impeller at the uh, impeller in revolution per minute v1 and v2 are the diameter of impeller at the inlet and at the outlet which is equal to twice of r that is twice of r1 and twice of r2 uh, omega is the angular speed of the wheel in the uh, radians per second which is given by the equation 2 pi n divided by 60 where n is again speed of the impeller in the uh, revolution per minute and u1 and u2 are the tangential velocity at the inlet and at the outlet which is given by omega multiplied by radius that is u1 is equal to omega r1 and u2 is equal to omega r2 now if you put this value of omega here what expression we are getting for the u1 u1 is equal to 2 pi n upon 60 multiplied by r1 and u2 is equal to 2 pi n 60 multiplied by r2 and you can also write down that expression as replace this 2 r1 with the d1 that is pi d1 upon 60 and pi d2 upon 60 for the u1 and u2 
respectively. Now let's move for the computation of torque, which is exerted by the impeller on the water, which is given by the expression rate of change of angular momentum. So I can say that it is change of angular momentum per second that will give us the rate of change of momentum, rate of change of angular momentum. Now uh, it can be written as final angular momentum minus initial angular momentum. Remember that in case of turbine, we have considered it as initial angular momentum minus final angular momentum as my water was exerting force on the uh, veins, but in this case, our veins exerting force on the water. That's why our expression would be final angular momentum minus initial angular momentum per second. Now, we will calculate both that is initial angular momentum and final angular momentum. Uh, as we know that angular momentum is given by momentum multiplied by a radius. Now, uh, if we talk about the momentum at the inlet, which is given by mass uh, multiplied by velocity per second. Now, what is the mass or fluid which is striking per second multiplied by velocity? Now, that velocity should be the same. What is the velocity we are considering here in the tangential direction? So, my mass per second, which is given by rho into q, and multiplied by velocity in tangential direction at the inlet. Now, velocity in tangential direction at the inlet is v w one. So, it is the our uh, horizontal component of v one. But in this case, it is zero. So whatever your expression for the angular momentum at the inlet will become equal to zero. So this whole equation can be written as equal to zero. Of course, we are going to put that equal to zero. Now, if you move towards the outlet, that is angular momentum at the outlet. Uh, okay, uh, here it should be outlet. Uh, there is some kind of mistake. So it is final angular momentum. Again, final angular momentum is given by momentum at the outlet multiplied by radius. So we will first compute momentum at the outlet, which is given by mass multiplied by velocity per second. Now, mass per second is the rho into q multiplied by velocity in the tangential direction at the outlet, which is given by Vw2. So uh, if we put this uh, expression in or this expression, final angular momentum, what we are getting here, angular momentum that is Momentum multiplied by radius, rho q multiplied by vw2 multiplied by r2. Now, uh, our whatever our expression for the torque, torque is equal to uh, final momentum minus initial momentum. So, our final momentum is rho q multiplied by vw2 multiplied by r2 minus initial momentum. As I told you, initial momentum will become 0 because of our vw1 is equal to 0 for the centrifugal pump. And in that case, whatever my equation for the torque, which is coming out as T is equal to rho q multiplied by vw2 multiplied by r2. So this will be our torque which is exerted by my impeller on the water or on the fluid. Now if we move towards the computation of one per second. So while we are calculating this uh, torque, we have considered angular momentum. So whenever we are going to uh, uh, calculate this work done, at that time also we need to consider the angular speed of the turbine. So we can calculate our work done per second. So whatever our work done per second is given by torque multiplied by angular speed. So this is what the force uh, which has been exerted on the liquid by this particular uh, impeller and if I multiply it with the angular speed, what I will get here? Work done per second. So work done per second by the impeller is given by rho q multiplied by vw2 multiplied by r2 multiplied by omega. Now we can replace this r2 multiplied by omega that is equal to u2. So put here omega multiplied by r2 is equal to u2 and what expression we are getting here for the work done per second that is coming out as work done per second is equal to rho q multiplied by vw2 multiplied by u2. And this expression is also said to be an equation of power at the impeller. So this is what our equation for the work done per second. There are some other form of this expression which is available in the reference books. Uh, like say, just divide and multiply this expression with the g. Uh, so like say here, rho q multiplied by g divided by g multiplied by vw2 multiplied by u2 and just simply putting this rho qg uh, divided by g that is rho qg with the w divided by g multiplied by v w2 multiplied by u2 so this is the another form of this particular expression that what we are ge uh, getting here or even uh, sometimes it is also written as work done per second per unit weight of the liquid in that case just simply divide this uh, expression rho q multiplied by Vw multiplied by U2 divided by per unit of fluid which is coming to the or uh, striking or uh, going through this uh, particular impeller that is given by rho q g. So this is the weight of fluid which is flowing through the impeller. So this rho q rho q will get cancelled and whatever the work done per second 
per unit weight of the liquid work done per second per unit weight of the liquid is given by 1 upon g vw2 multiplied by u2 so this is the another two uh, form of this particular expression of the uh, equation of power at the impeller so those are the those two expression what we have discussed uh, just now uh, work done per second in the form of this uh, w upon g multiplied by vw2 multiplied by vw2 uh, and even you can write down the same expression in the form of work done per second per unit weight of the fluid which is flowing through per uh, flowing through impeller per second that is given by rho q divided by rho q g multiplied by vw2 u2 so expression is coming as uh, work done per second per unit weight of the fluid which is flowing through impeller per second is given by 1 upon g multiplied by vw2 multiplied by u2 and this equation uh, is also known as impeller power per head so whenever it is asked to calculate or whenever you are uh, looking for the impeller power per head then you should use this expression 1 upon g multiplied by vw2 multiplied by u2 so some of the reference books uh, using this expression uh, rho q uh, no, work done per second is equal to w upon g multiplied by vw2 multiplied by u2 where w is given by uh, rho q multiplied by g or you can write down that work done per second expression in the form of per unit weight of the fluid that is 1 upon g multiplied by vw2 multiplied by u2 where q is the volume of water which is flowing through the impeller if uh, we want to compute this q then you can compute it as if b1 is the uh, thickness of the impeller at the inlet and b2 is the thickness of the impeller at the outlet then q can be calculated as area of impeller multiplied by velocity of flow where area of impeller is given by pi d1 multiplied by b1 and multiplied by velocity of flow at the inlet and similarly at the outlet pi d2 multiplied by b2 multiplied by vf2 remember that for centrifugal pump your vf2 and vf1 both are equal always be so remember this particular relationship your velocity of flow at the outlet and at the outlet would be the same in case of centrifugal pump now sometimes this expression for the discharge is also written as in the form of pi d1 multiplied by v1 minus nt multiplied by vf1 where this nt is the uh, consideration for the thickness of the blades so whenever we are talking about the impeller which is coming with the radial curved vein or backward curved vein at the time whenever we are calculating the discharge we are considering whole area as area of flow but if you want to detect that thickness of the impeller veins from that area of flow in that case you need to consider this expression v1 minus uh, m multiplied by t where m is the number of veins and t is the thickness of each vein so you can easily uh, deduct that uh, what are the thickness of the all the veins by considering this expression so if the thickness of veins are given number of veins are given in that case we should use this expression for the computation of q which is pi uh, d1 multiplied by v1 minus nt multiplied by vf1 where vf1 is the velocity of flow at the inlet so this is what the equation for the work done per second by the impeller on the water hope you have got all the points those are the references which i have used while preparing my presentation thank you for watching